I'm here today in Cancun. Many people have told me that they've come to Mexico, but they only visited Cancun and only stayed in the resorts. They didn't get a chance to see any pyramids. And I think that a lot of people just don't know how to get to the pyramids because they're all over the place. There's even some right next to this beach. So today, I'm going to explain to you how to get from Cancun, how to leave the resort, and get to all sorts of interesting archaeological sites. Yes, there are really pyramids in Cancun. And in a couple of minutes, I'll be discussing other ones nearby. But for now, let's take a look at the archaeological site in Cancun itself, El Rey. El Rey means the king in Spanish, and it's named after a figure that was found there in one of the buildings. El Rey was an important city for trade and religion. It consists mostly of small buildings, and it was built in the post-classic period, around 1100 to 1500 AD, about the same time as the Black Plague, Genghis Khan, and the Inca Empire. I'm here in the archaeological zone El Rey, La Isla, the island of Cancun, is very long and that necessitates a certain type of construction. Right next to me, just parallel to this archaeological site, is the modern road, which is pretty much a highway. And you can see that in ancient times, they also built in this uh, long, stretched out way. And so the entire site is kind of like one long street with various buildings on the side. None of these structures had stone roofs. Here on the coast, it was common to build using wood when you're building the roof of a building. And we don't know exactly what that would have looked like because they're all uh, long rotted away, but it could have been something like this palapa over here. Gives you sort of an idea. Most of the buildings on this street uh, are like this, just a pyramidal platform. Although some of them have very large stones. This is more than a meter wide, maybe four feet. On these smaller buildings, there would have been houses, or possibly warehouses, uh, because this was a commercial center. Of course, being along the coast, there was lots of trade here by ships, well, by boats. This is the Grand Plaza. It's not that grand, but it's the biggest plaza in El Rey. And here we have uh, several important buildings. There's a building with columns, a long building with columns over here, which uh, probably would have been a palace. There's a pyramid, a small one, which has uh, also remains of altars and religious buildings on top. Here we have a very well-preserved uh, building, and the roof sort of gives you an impression of what it may have looked like in the past. Here in the back of this building, you can see uh, the internal wall. There were two rooms here, and this wall would have been in between them, and you can see that they built these very large uh, doorways and then they built the rest of the building around that and here's um, here's a bit of the wall standing and there would have been wood on top of this beam up here on top of this piece of stone and that would have held up a wooden roof and I think that this is at least in part a restoration uh, and this is also built the same way you can see that there is an internal door frame that would have held up the center of the roof. There would have been walls around it like that, and there would have been uh, a wooden roof. We have another pyramid here in the middle. Well, a platform. And over here, another building with columns. This is called a palace-type structure, and uh, it would have been open on this side. There's another staircase here, and there would have been a wall around the back. There are also benches inside, which would have been used to sleep on or to sit on. This structure is almost as large as that palace back there, but that one's made out of stone, so we have some idea what that structure was. And this one's made, it would have been made of wood, so we don't know. This building was a temple, and you can see it had red paint. The paint is so well preserved uh, in the sites of Cancun, because they were still inhabited at the time of Spanish conquest. So they're not that old, and nature didn't have a lot of time to take them back yet, though it's working on it. This would have been a temple. We know that because there are altars inside uh, for fire, for offerings. 
and not only this one but also that one over there and you can see they have um, a bit more elaborate architecture than the other buildings on the site I think there's one more over there too here you can see the building would have had some benches uh, there's a bench there and there's what's left of a bench over there and also this looks like it would have been some sort of shrine it's some very small portal within the building here behind a bush they have uh, discarded some of the signs explaining what the buildings are which is a bit unfortunate there's a second site just to the north of el rey called san miguelito the two are separated by a golf course and a half hour walk to get to the archaeological site you must first pass through a museum I thought that this was going to be some kind of tourist trap, but actually it was surprisingly good. The museum contains a collection of pottery, ceramics, jewelry, jade, hieroglyphic stone carvings, decorations from buildings, and even a good collection of things from Chichen Itza, including giant stone carved panels. It only takes about half an hour to an hour to see everything in the museum. So if you don't plan on going to any pyramids at all and want to stay on La Isla in Cancun, this is probably your best bet for getting a real taste of ancient Maya culture. And it's right in the middle of the hotel zone. The museum is attached to an archaeological site. And if you visit the museum, you can see a real pyramid as part of your admission. This is San Miguelito, which is a really nice site because it's in the shade <laughs> and the sun can be pretty brutal around here so if you need to go someplace shady and take a break from the heat this is a good place san miguelito is also a long site and it used to be along a road that continued on to el rey as you can see it's still on a road today This is the palace of Chuck, the rain god. And you can see it has that very typical coastal post-classic architecture with the columns on one side and a back wall and then some uh, benches all around the inside. This is a nice walk through the woods, but bring bug spray. Now this is actually a pretty interesting site. Not an ancient site, but this is a well that it was made in the 1950s. Uh, Cancun is not a very old city, even though it has these ancient ruins. Um, around the time of the Spanish conquest in the 1550s, this area was abandoned, and for many, many years, nobody was living here. And in the 1950s, the only thing that was here was a coconut ranch, and there were no other facilities, no uh, roads, no nothing. And that was their well. That's where they got their water. <laughs> that was the entire infrastructure of Cancun, uh, about 70 years ago. It looks like they removed the signs here too. You can see that here were some houses. A nice large house. And over there is a pyramid. Those iguanas can make a lot of noise <laughs> and startle you. Be careful. Also, watch where you step. Here and there you can see some of the red paint remaining on the walls. And also you can see this um, typical post-classical coastal style, which had this sort of cladding of um, thin rocks on the outside. And then it was filled in with uh, looser stones and dirt. Okay, not a bad pyramid. It's, uh, they don't say exactly how tall it is but it's oriented facing towards El Rey, and it probably would have been a continuation of that street. And there would have been a, a temple on top, of course. You're not allowed to go up there, as in most uh, very touristy sites. What's interesting is you can see the back wall isn't flat. It's got uh, one wall going like that and another one like this. You can sort of see around here how it goes. Makes me wonder if it's aligned to something. I see a corner here, so it looks like just off the trail there's uh, still unexcavated mounds and platforms all covered in leaves and foliage from the jungle, of course. This is called the North Complex. It's a housing complex, very similar to El Rey, but uh, quite large and well-preserved. And here's more, and there probably would have been more in what is now the parking lot. 
that's it from uh, El Rey and San Miguelito, two archaeological sites here in the hotel zone of Cancun that probably would have been connected in ancient times. Black lizard, cool. Sites that would have been probably connected in ancient times. They're only about a mile, half a mile apart, one kilometer. And there probably would have been even more stuff in the middle connecting them, uh, where there is now currently a golf course. But what's left is interesting to see nevertheless. You have a pyramid here, temples, and if I had to choose one, I'd recommend San Miguelito, because to get into this site, you have to go through the museum. Both of these sites, El Rey and San Miguelito, are easily reachable. There's a public bus that goes on the main road of Cancun, and plenty of taxis. There's actually a third site, just to the north of Cancun, called El Meco. Unfortunately, when I went there, it was closed for renovations. I think they're building a visitor center. But it has a couple of small buildings, as well as one of the largest pyramids in the immediate region. It's reachable by taxi or car. The most famous and popular pyramid to visit from Cancun is Chichen Itza, but it's actually not that close. It's a two or three hour ride into the neighboring state of Yucatan. The city is quite impressive and literally a wonder of the world, so it is worth the time to go out there. But keep in mind that it's much more crowded than pretty much every other archeological site in Mexico. But there are plenty of ways to get there. Every hotel and tour agency in Cancun will have a way to take people there. But the cheapest option is the ADO bus, which leaves from the bus station in downtown Cancun. These buses are cheap, clean, and pretty comfortable, and they can take you directly to the site. Nearby Chichen Itza is another site that's less popular, but equally impressive, Ekbalam. Ekbalam has a lot of pyramids. One of them is massive and features beautiful artwork. Ekbalam is also older than Chichen Itza, dating from the classic period. And the ruins are more than a thousand years old. To get to Ekbalam, you must first pass through the town of Valladolid, a charming colonial town with some nice architecture and even a couple of museums. Valladolid was one of the first colonial settlements in Yucatan. It contains old churches and monasteries, several museums, and in general, pleasant architecture. And it's a nice place to spend an afternoon or even a few nights. It's possible to get from Cancun to Valladolid by bus. It takes about two hours. And there are buses and taxis that go from Valladolid to Ekbalam quite cheaply. If we head back to Cancun and head south along the coast, two hours away is Tulum, also a popular tourist destination and famous for its ruins and pyramid which sits right on the beach. Tulum is uniquely beautiful, but the architectural style is very similar to the ruins in Cancun, and it doesn't have any grand pyramids but you can combine it with a nice trip to the beach. It's also extremely crowded with tourists, so keep that in mind and try to get there early. This one is also easily reachable by bus, and nearby are some other ruins. First, to the south, there's a place called Muyil. Even though Muyil is very close to Tulum, it's not so popular with tourists, and it's much less crowded. Muyil has some unusual pyramids and a lot of nature. It's in the middle of the Sian Ka'an Nature Reserve a large, swampy, jungly park. It has nice trails that you can walk on, but hold on to your hat. It's just to the south of Tulum and can be reached by taxi or colectivo from the main road. And lastly, another site that's nearby is Koba. Koba is a very impressive site with some very large pyramids and interesting buildings, and the site is huge. They even let you rent bikes so you can ride around and see everything. It's possible to reach Koba by a local bus from Tulum or a colectivo, but there are also buses leaving from Cancun. If you'd like to know more about any of these individual sites, check out my Yucatan playlist. There's also a train nowadays, the Tren Maya. Just recently built, it makes stops in Chichen Itza, Tulum, Valladolid, and other places around the Yucatan Peninsula. But it's more expensive than the bus, so keep that in mind. This is my first time attempting to make a travel guide here on YouTube. But if you'd like to see more content like this that can help people plan trips, please let me know in the comments below. In my next video, I'll be explaining how to get to one of the most remote archaeological sites in all of Mexico. So if you want to see that, please subscribe. As always, thank you to my patrons. And thank you for watching Pyramid Review.